In this um, video, I'm going to show you how you can use the freely available online LC filter design software to design the filters um, for your practical assignment. <clears throat> going to do a new design, but you are able to save your designs so you can come back to them again and then you'll be able to open them up from get old design. So in the new design, you're going to be building um, a type of filter called a constant K. So we need to select that in the middle there. We're not going to be looking at any of these other types. And then you're going to, if you're doing low pass, you're going to use, uh, choose capacitor input low pass, and that will be a pi type design. If you're going to do a high pass, you'll choose again capacitor input, and that will be a T type. For this example, I'm going to build a um, capacitor input high pass, so it'll be a T type design. Constant K, you need to say what our cutoff frequency is or bandwidth, 40K. Leave the order at 3, we don't need to change that. And the input termination will be for your filters either 600 or 50 ohms, so we put that in there. And that's all the information needed on that page. We can then look at the uh, schematic and we'll see we've got a load impedance, 600 ohms a source and its impedance of 600 ohms and then we've got two series capacitors in this T design of 6600 or so picofarads and one shunt inductor of 1.19 millihenries. There are ideal component values and we're going to look at what kind of transmission or transfer function that gives and then we're going to come back and edit that to their preferred values show you how you can get the data you need to see what kind of cutoff frequency is predicted for this filter in reality. So we're going to miss out edit for a minute. We're going to go to analysis. On the analysis screen you tell it what frequency you want to start the analysis from. 1k for a 40k filter will be fine and the um, how far. So we, what we're saying here is we want our frequency scale on the plot to go from 1 kilohertz to 1 megahertz. All these other things remain the same and then we can do our plot and we get a graph we've got dB here from 0 down to minus 60 and on the bottom scale we've got a logarithmic scale that goes 1k, 10k, 100k, 1 mega ohm. So you've got four decades on a logarithmic scale. And my filter quite obviously passes in the high band up here, and then gradually we get more and more attenuation in the um, stop band. And my cutoff frequency should be somewhere around here, 40k. If we click on the blue line, you'll see we get some values down the bottom. And the values we're interested in for this practical are the leftmost two. The current frequency where the dot is, the green dot, so that should be like 200k. And the next one, minus 0.0342, that's in dB, and it's the transmission. How much of the, how much we're showing there, how much of the attenuation we got at that particular frequency. If I go off down here somewhere, at um, 8k, my attenuation is 40 dB. What we are able to do is put markers in. So we can, if we look around here, we can find that our um, point where we get minus 3 dB is definitely somewhere around about 40k. If we go to um, markers, not help, markers, we can put a marker in at 40k. And also, for the benefit of this demonstration, put a marker in somewhere in the middle of the pass band. Let's go 200 kilohertz and show that. We can see that at 40k we've got around 3 dBs of attenuation and in the pass band we've got very little attenuation minus 0.00347
So that's the ideal situation for this film. Cut off frequency 40k, virtually no um, attenuation in the past back. If we now go back to um, our design and click on edit, you can actually select each section and edit the component values. So we select the first one and we can't actually get um, a capacitor of that exact value but what we can get is a 6700 um, picofarad. I'm just going to copy that value and accept it and then going to paste the same value in the third section accept and then I'm going to change the inductor value to exactly one millihenry except. So there's certainly some prepared values that I could get my hands on. Um, what we can do now is just check our analysis parameters, they should still be the same. And then go back to plot. And if we look now um, at 40k, we've got not we've got more, quite significantly more than 3 dBs of attenuation. We've got 4.64 dB, and in the past band we've got a bit more attenuation than we had before, 0.014. So there's some values for comparison, and you can take um, screenshots. By the way. Although this blue line carries on down here, um, and suggests that it goes flat line there, that's wrong. It would actually continue down here at the same angle, at the same roll-off rate. And if you actually look, the uh, attenuation is increasing, although the blue line carrying, carrying on at straight suggests that it isn't. It actually is. So that's something that the software, in my mind, shouldn't be doing, but I can't change that. So, um, so what we're looking for is the point where the attenuation is minus 3 dB. So let's see how close we can find it. We've got minus 0.299 at 45k. So near as damn it, we've found it. If we put a marker in, at 45k we've got at 45k 3.062 dBs of attenuation so what we can say about that is that this filter designed for 40k um, cut off point but because of the preferred values we're actually going to achieve our cut off um, specification is actually 45k so we're 5k higher. You must remember though that this um, this scale, frequency scale, is logarithmic and so if you look at the difference frequency between those two points it's not very far. Okay, um, And that is, act that is actually quite close. Now dependent on our application we might prefer to be slightly the other side and, and have a cut off frequency um, lower than 40k than over that very much depends on application and that's not something that we're applying here so I think that pretty much covers everything that you need to know how to do with regard to the LC software your job now is to design your own fillers and interpret the results and use them to do a comparison with what you actually get when you build a filter in real life with components with tolerances and you'll come some way off this particularly in terms of how much attenuation that you get in the pass band because um, inductors in particular notoriously high um, tolerances plus or minus 20 percent and capacitors are likely to be at least 10 percent plus or minus hopefully this video is some, some help to you uh, now I'm going to sign off